Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you. So, good afternoon, good afternoon. Thank you for coming to today's triad meeting for the Manhattan and New Atlantic Triad. Uh, I'd like to introduce today's speaker. Hello, hello. Today we have Charles Murray. He is a exercise physiologist and health coach uh, at Silver Cross Hospital. And today he's gonna be talking to us about heart health, exercise programs, and what we can do to stay active and strong. Um, we would like to also let everyone know that we do have a tentative schedule for our upcoming triad meeting. So please check that out before you leave today um, and make sure to follow up with our emails. And without further ado, Charles, thank you so much. Thank you, Jackie. And happy Thursday to you all. I hope you all are having a wonderful week so far. It is so nice to see these awesome smiley faces. It, it, it really it makes me feel more relaxed, so thank you. Um, as Jackie said, I, um, my background is kinesiology, so I'm an exercise physiologist at Silver Cross Hospital. I've been there for 15 years now. Started out working in cardiology. I was working with people with heart issues and um, pulmonary issues, individuals that had weight loss surgery. So all that, that whole gambit of, of exercise and just um, physical wellness was my, my background. So about eight years ago, Silver Cross decided to create a wellness program. And when it created that wellness program, I, I already had a desire to help people beyond the physical component. The physical component was working with individuals with heart issues. Like after their heart surgery, my role was to help them rehab. It's, it's kind of like rehabbing the heart, pretty much. Um, so what I learned was there was always a, a hidden story. I got the individuals after the heart surgery, you know, they had, may, may have had uh, high blood pressure for many years. They may have had a, a strong family history of heart disease, but I saw them after the fact. So I've always wanted to just, just help people beyond that component. So I got certified with um, wellness coaching. And now what I do is I help individuals before they get to that component. My role right now is helping the employees. So what I do is I come up with plans for them, plans of, let's say you, you're stressed. I have a background in, in mindfulness, yoga. I was, used to teach yoga at the hospital as well, but now I still practice the mindfulness component. Um, and I'm a smoking sensation facilitator. So helping those people develop healthy habits but why did I want to do that? It was not about me. As a little boy, I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and um, when I was a young, a little kid, my, one of my uncles passed away at 36 of a massive heart attack. I talked to him on a, the day before, the, and you know, at this time, I'm, you know, I, I didn't know a lot about heart health, right? It just kind of stuck in my mind. My favorite uncle, 36, massive heart attack. And then five years later, my, favorite, my grandmother passed away of a heart disease of my freshman year in college. And then six months later, another grandmother passed away. Fast forward 20 years ago, my mother passed away suddenly at 59 of, heart, of a heart attack. Talked to her that Sunday, passed away that, uh, that Monday. No history of heart disease. My mother was my workout partner. Um, so as I go back a little bit further, the gap between there, then, and 20 years, I was like, wow, I, really, I, I love helping people. I love exercising. I had no idea that there was a calling for exercise physiology in um, healthcare. So in 2006, I started, um, I became the first exercise physiologist in Southern Illinois, working in a clinical setting. And I, that was my way of giving back to my grandmothers. I, I started volunteering helping individuals in the cardiac rehab um, gym. And it was just, it, was, it really filled my heart up to see individuals become their best version of themselves. Because hey, we're all human. We don't know everything, right? So we have to continue to work on ourselves. Listening to some of the conversations, people, you guys are still exercising and, 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 and just uncovering new ways of living. Like, wow, this is really awesome. That's the kind of people I like to, to work with. And also, if there's something I could do, I want to throw this out there, reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to help you as a healthcare professional along the way. Uh, Jackie has my information. So, sorry, I got off on a little tangent, but I wanted you guys to know why I'm here. It's just, it's to help people. I see you guys, you're like family to me. 
I don't know you, I don't know your names, but you know what, we are all connected. We are. Um, I, working in rehab, I've worked with over 5,000 people <laughs> during my time working in rehab. I see people all over New Lenox, all over uh, Manuka where I live, all over the area. And you know, they're, they're still friends to me, you know? So, um, yes. So helping you helps your grandkids too. Think about it, helping you help someone else. If we're all connected, that's why I have this picture here because it's a connection. One of my mentors, um, she said to me, Charles, whatever you, she's 85 years old, still exercises and everything. She said, you know, when you do something, it affects seven generations after you. That's powerful and that's the way I like to live. So I have three boys. I have a, a soon to be 16 year old, 14 year old and 11 year old. So my legacy will live in them. What you do lives in your kids, it lives in your grandkids, it lives in you know, all those people that you're connected to. That's powerful, right? Because someone is always watching. I used to love to, my grandmother loved to cook. So I remember all her recipes from Louisiana. So she's still alive in me because of that, you know? So what kind of legacy we want to leave? But what I, uh, get the clicker going here. Okay, all right. So what I have here to get started is a hearty health, a healthy heart. What did I say, a hearty health? Probably can't repeat that again, right? <laughs> a healthy heart, let's imagine. My uncle in the beginning, I said 36 years old, right? This is a 36-year-old healthy heart. This is a 36-year-old unhealthy heart. It could be due to family history, that are those unknown factors, those things we don't know about. It could be from stress. We see we are more than what meets the human eye. We see a fraction of who we are. There are so many things going on within us. So this person could have been going all those years in heart, you know, not functioning at his full capacity and never knew. But why, at 36 years old, who would think to think, oh, I need to go get a physical at, at 36 and figure out, you know, if I have a, a heart problem or something like that, right? So well, I say that to say this here, um, it's important for us to continue to take care of ourselves because we do not know, you know, um, what could be going on within us. So that could be from years and years of unhealthy living, who knows? But there's things we can't control and things we can't control when it comes to our heart. Those things we can't control if we smoke or not. Smokers are four times likely to develop heart disease. Uncontrolled cholesterol, high cholesterol, it's huge. So know your numbers. It's important for us to know where our cholesterol is. Um, Uncontrolled diabetes, your reaction towards stress. We all have stress. How do we react to it? Do we internalize it? That's huge. And let me backtrack a little bit more. At nine years old, I was diagnosed with high blood pressure. At nine years old, you know, each year when kids have to get um, those physicals and things like that, my blood pressure was always up as a kid. The doctor was like, he's a healthy kid. What's wrong with this young man? It got to the point where they had to take my blood pressure on my calves because they were like, whoa, there must be something wrong, you know, with his upper body or something. I did uh, stress tests and things like that numerously as a little boy. I had white coat syndrome. <laughs> but that still did not... Um, you know, the doctor didn't know, you know, every time I went in, I'm, I'm freaking out. I was thinking I was going to have a shot each time I went to the doctor. So, so, <laughs> so seriously, so that, that component, they were worried about that because my blood pressure was easily 160 over 100 all the time. But when I got left the hospital, I was fine. And here it is now. As an adult, I work at a hospital, right? Here we go. <laughs> it all comes back around. But what do you do? Um, so I, I started out with um, health care and, and um, uh, getting my blood pressure checked and everything at a very young age. So because of that, so I, that was always in the back of my mind. What is a normal blood pressure? What, what those numbers should be? So I was kind of like, you know, prepping me for my career now. So, um, so elevated blood pressure, being physically inactive. So it's important for us all to be active. What is being physically active? I'm not saying you have to go to a gym every day. No, moving your body is key. You do not need a gym, a gym needs you. Remember that. You can be physically active at home. You can be physically active 
just walking in nature, making, you know, making your muscles, your body use for you, use, uh, using your body for its benefits, working that heart muscle, getting that blood circulation. Um, I work with a lot of people who just, you know, after COVID decided they don't want to go back to a gym, which is okay. So I create plans where you can make your body work for you at home, wherever you want. And that's, that's my um, exercise program. I exercise at home. I, yeah, I'm too busy to go to a gym. Um, so what are the cardiac benefits of doing that, doing those things, that exercise, moving the body, making the body work for you? It helps decrease cholesterol. Like I said, there's factors we can control and those factors we can control. But this is what we can do. It helps to um, increase your HDL. That's the good cholesterol. It helps decrease stress, decreases the blood pressure over time. How does that happen when it raises the blood pressure? Your vessels dilate when you exercise to meet the demand that you've placed on it. So afterwards, there's a relaxation response that's created. So your blood pressure can be up to 15 points lower than it was when you started. It's a natural blood pressure medication, just moving your body. Your body improves with use. It helps increase your metabolism and over time weight loss. That's the magic thing that everyone wants, right? Well, the, the weight loss component, that may take a little bit more time um, because those other factors come into play first. You may notice increase in strength. My 14 year old just started working out with me. He's like, dad, I don't have the muscles yet. I think I'm gonna quit. I'm like, Oliver, you have to give it time. <laughs> You're only 14, just continue to move. I say, how do you feel? I feel good. I mean, I, 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 he, he's 14. So, you know, at 14, they don't really know right now, right? So I'm just trying to get that component where it's just, you know, like brushing your teeth, moving your body. Healthy habits are important. They're all important for us. You guys created a healthy habit. You are here today. Community is a part of a healthy habit. So this is awesome. You know, what you're doing, you championing each other. Can everybody just give me a, just a big smile really fast? Just a big smile, like seriously. Smiling is so therapeutic. That is a healthy habit too. Even if, I, that's something I, I do all the time. I do it when I'm nervous, I do it when I'm happy. So I always have a smile on my face. When I came in today, I said, I'm gonna be the guy with the big smile on his face, <laughs> which is true, because that's just who I am. And it makes me feel good. You can, if you don't feel well, you can also trick yourself by smiling and your brain will, will, you know, think you're okay. You're thriving instead of surviving. Just a side note. So those psychological benefits, like the smiling component. I had a good workout this morning, so that, that's why my smile is huge right now, too. It helps build self-confidence, improve self-image. We know all this stuff, right? We've heard this since we were kids, right? But we're gonna talk about that, too. It helps improve relaxation response, develop a positive mental attitude. Positive mental attitude. Yes, that's huge. And that's what I'm aiming for with my son and with my kids. I wanna make sure that they continue to just have those healthy things in place, you know, because nothing's always gonna flow the way you want it to do. But resiliency is important for us. It's, it's important for us as we're living. It's important for us today. Yesterday, it rained all day, right? How miserable was that? You know, we had no sunshine. I was like, okay, but you know what? It does, we're gonna have beautiful flowers soon outside. The weather's gonna be nice, so let it rain. Just let it rain today. Today, we still don't have any sunshine. <laughs> so you know what? We're gonna be the sunshine for each other today. That's why I asked you guys for a smile because it's important for us to, to be a, um, the rainbow in somebody's cloud some days. Yeah, seriously, because we're, once again, we are all connected. And when you guys leave here today, I just want you to just have a huge smile on your face and feel good because you may not remember everything I said, but how do you feel? What, what I want you to take away from this today is doing something positive for yourself, creating a healthy habit, whatever that healthy habit is for you, and just continuing to just express and extract. I love poetry, so I may start just reciting a poem or something. So let me get back on track, guys. I don't want to put you to sleep. <laughs> All right, so the fit principle, what is that? We talked about those healthy habits. What do you like to do? 
It's easy for me to say, well, get on a treadmill as a health professional. Go for a walk. You may not like to do those things. You may like yoga. You may like Tai Chi. You may like to swim. What is it you want for yourself? All right. So um, the frequency, how regular, how many times a week you're going to exercise? How many times a week you're going to get up and, and move your body? Have that in mind. You may do it already. So this may be, you know, I'm preaching to the choir, maybe to all you guys. But, you know, if I am, then good, because that's, you know, I'm bouncing back what you're doing. So just keep on going. Keep going forward. That is so important. Moving forward. The intensity. How hard you want to work out. You may not want to work out hard today. The weather may bother you. Give it what you have. That's important. Some days may be harder than others. Some days I can do 500 push-ups. Some days I can do 200 push-ups, depending on the day. We're human. It's important for us to be kind to our body, be kind to our mind. That is so important. Because you know what? At the end of the day, how do, how do you feel? There, there's going to be days you don't want to exercise. There's days I definitely don't want to exercise, you know? And I, I have to sometimes, okay, what's going on? It could have been a busy day at work the day before. My mind may be tired. That's okay. Be gentle. All right? Because this is like the tortoise won, won a race, not the jackrabbit. Someone just told me that yesterday. So I just remembered that. So that's why I had to say that. So it's not that funny, right? <laughs> All right. The time. How long? Each session. How long? You may want to work out 10 minutes. 10 minutes may be all you have. You know what? If that's all you have, that's all you have today. You give it what you got. You maximize your time. Sometimes 15 minutes is all I have. When I first started in the field, it, it had to be an hour and a half. But now I'm not, you know, that young anymore. <laughs> so and with your busy life and, and family, you know, 10 minutes may be all I have, 10 to 15 minutes. And I maximize that. I make sure that 10 to 15 minutes, I'm giving it all I have for that moment, for that time. And I want you guys to do the same. All right? Just give me a thumbs up if you're with me. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Woo. Sorry, that's one of my workout things. My son's like, Dad, can you stop saying woo? Like Ric Flair. But, you know, that's just one of my favorite things. All right. And type. What type of training would you do? So that's the fit principle. The frequency, intensity time and type so what do you like to do if it's like if you like to swim you're not going to go for a run if you want to improve your your backstroke right so just be specific on what you like but also be kind to yourself if you miss a day of exercise it's okay yeah. you get back on it the next day because your mind is important the worst thing you can do is to start dwelling in something you know because for whatever reason but just get back on track, all right? And keep it simple. You may have, you know, you can use um, dumbbells, kettlebells, YouTube videos, resistance bands. If I come back, I will use your body weight for you, create an entire awesome workout for you, total body workout. Um, but it, it's no limit to what you can use for your body for strength training. Like I said, you do not have to go to the gym. You can use your body weight to move in all planes of motion and you can get a great workout. You can get toned. You can increase your aerobic capacity as well. The benefits of exercise, it strengthens the heart muscle. That's what we're here for. February is heart month. We want to continue to keep that heart muscle, the most important muscle in our body, strong, right? Without a, without a strong heart muscle, our physical, our external muscles, it, it really doesn't matter because everything is pumping. Your heart's pumping that blood flow to everywhere, everywhere in your body, every extremity, every ligament, everything. Even right now, your body is thriving for you so you can sit upright and be functional. You're thriving from the inside out. Yes, you are because you all have a strong heart muscle. Happy heart month. Yes, it increases the collateral circulation. What is that? Aerobic exercise increases the, the vessels on the heart muscles to meet the demand you've placed on it. There is no magic pill for that. Exercise, aerobic exercise, continuous, nonstop, and, and rhythmical movement. And it's just walking. Um, 
running on a treadmill, anything, that jumping jacks. If you do that enough, your body has to adapt to what you do, right? You get stronger, your heart has to adapt to it. So those vessels on the heart muscles, they increase. And let's say they increase in diameter to, to just work more fluidly for you. Let's say you, um, what, what, what that does is, let's say you have a blockage or something, it can override and just, just continue to just feed the muscles, you know. I, we've seen that happen, and we had a, a marathon runner who had a lot of collateral circulation. He had a strong family history of heart disease, and at 56, his father died. His grandfather died at like 58. He was mid-50s, and he had collateral circulation that, you know, helped him. He didn't have a heart attack. How he found out he had heart disease was he knew his family history, went in for a stress test, and he had blockage in his widow maker. But that collateral circulation was just continuing to feed that heart muscle. This individual did not have a heart attack. That doesn't happen in all cases. I'm not saying that, but it, it does, you know, the collateral circulation is a byproduct of what you do, how you're taking care of yourself. And it also increases brain efficiency and increases the metabolism. That's one thing we all want, right? We want to keep that metabolism revved up. <laughs> All right, so warm up, what should I do? And I, I must say, I am horrible at creating PowerPoints. You see some of my fonts are kind of like all off or whatever, but it, it's fun. You know, <laughs> I was looking at them like, I have no idea how to fix this, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna leave it before I mess it all up or delete my PowerPoint. Um, so warm up, when you're exercising, let's say you only have 15 minutes, you make sure that first five minutes you're warming the body up. Why you wanna warm the body up? Because you do not wanna jump into an exercise program just like, you remember when we were kids when your friends would come over and say, hey, let's go, ex go outside. And we would just run outside, you would run to your friend's house or whatever it was, run to the park. As we get older, we can't do that anymore. <laughs> we have to warm the body up first. And what that is, it's just, you can mimic whatever movement you're gonna do, just at a lower weight. So let's say you're gonna do, um, some body weight squats or something like that, just start warming the body up, just, you know, bringing a leg to the side or something, half squats, whatever it may be, keeping it simple is important. All right, so just make sure you warm that body up. I had, when I was uh, 30, I had a knee injury because I forgot I wasn't 21 anymore. I was playing soccer with my, the son that I work out with, slipped in the grass, tore my, ruptured my patella tendon. My kneecap was way up here, guys. Oh. That's the time my wife drove me to Silver Cross. I'm like, oh no, I'm crying in the back seat of our minivan. I'm like, don't tell anyone I'm crying, all right? <laughs> I had knee surgery, but true story. So the, the physician who repaired my knee, put my kneecap back in place, said, you must not have warmed up, did you? I was like, no. I don't know, I'm, I'm still young. He's like, no, you're not that young anymore. So that was a huge reality check for me because I didn't warm up. So. It can happen, and I knew better. I'm a health professional, right? But I'm human. I thought I was 21. <laughs> so that warm up, it also increases the flexibility in the muscles, the tendons and ligaments. I've known this forever. We know this stuff. It increases uh, circulating oxygen, increases your body temperature, prevents irregular heartbeats. It's huge. Make sure you warm up, you wanna prevent any hiccups in the heart or, or you know you want to let your body know that you're getting ready to exercise before you actually do it and how you do that you communicate you can't just physically talk to the body right so you just let the body know you know just take it easy your heart rate will start to respond to what you're doing you may notice if you wear a watch with a heart rate monitor on it and when you start thinking about exercise your heart rate may start to rise right away because your body, it's, it's starting to meet the demand that you're placing on it. In your mind, it's already preparing you for it. I've seen that happen a lot too, and it prepares us for the aerobic exercise you're doing. Any questions so far? All right. So aerobic exercise is what I was talking about. That's with oxygen, and that is the exercise that helps you build that collateral circulation we were talking about, all right? So, and that's anything that's regular, rhythmical, and nonstop. And there's no limit to that. Jumping jacks can be regular, rhythmical, and nonstop. Walking in place, regular, rhythmical, and nonstop. It's cardiovascular exercise. You don't, like I said, you don't need that physical gym. If you don't want to go to the gym, just move your body. You got this. You have the most amazing piece of equipment 
on the earth right now, your body. And you, you got this. All right, and it will respond to you. It will. I've seen people start exercising in their late 80s. I had patients in their 90s start exercising. Of course, we didn't have them on a treadmill running or anything like that. Everything was based on your own functional capacity, and that's what I want you to do. Challenge yourself, all right? You may have a thought in your mind, well, I can't do that. First off, let's think about what can we do then? Well, let's not think about what we can't do and start thinking about what we can do for ourselves, all right? Challenging our mental beliefs about ourselves. That's huge. Because, you, you know, sometimes we may say, well, most people this age can't do this, or I've done it before, then I have to check myself. Okay, but what can I do? Why am I comparing, right? We don't compare to our, you know, when it's, it's you versus you. All right, and examples of those are, like I said, walking, jogging, cycling, swimming, whatever you like, aerobic exercise, regular, rhythmical, and nonstop. You can sit in your chair, get that heart rate up, move those arms. Yes, you can do it. You got this. Anaerobic exercise, that's the weight training component. That's without oxygen, and it still benefits the heart because that helps the skeletal muscles. So think about those physical muscles you have, right? You want to keep those muscles strong to take the load off of your heart. That's important. All right, and examples are weightlifting, bowling, golfing, using those skeletal muscles. All right, and you know, the American Heart Association recommends at least 30 minutes. That's a recommendation, yes. But like I said in the beginning, if you have 10 minutes, you have 10 minutes. If you have 15 minutes, you have, if you have segments in your day. If you start off one or two days, you'll still gain benefits of exercise. If you have one day, you can dedicate to just taking care of those healthy habits. One day, you will still start to gain the benefits. You don't have to be rigid on your body. You don't have to be rigid on yourself. The cool down is just as important, guys, too. The purpose is to prevent irregular heartbeats, blood pooling, and what that is, like some, let's, let's say you've been walking and you're, um, you may notice you get dizzy. Think about it when I said your vessels start to dilate to meet the demands you placed on it. If you just stop exercising, that blood pooling can happen. And you know, your body's telling you, you need to sit down or lay down. So that's what that is. And I've seen that with people on treadmills or just stopping the treadmills. And even a lot of younger individuals, like that's happened to my son. He's like, well, I have him on an exercise bike and he just gets off like, I'm done. I'm like, nope, get back on, you gotta cool down. And, and you know, he's like, oh, I feel dizzy, dad. I'm like, yeah, cause you didn't do this. <laughs> but hey, all right. Um, so gradually decrease the workloads. So that's how you do that. I just want you just to stop, just slow it down. If you're working out at home and you're by yourself, just walk in place or just walk around. That, that's an efficient way to um, start cooling down. Bad news, when you stop exercising within one or two weeks, you start to lose those benefits. Those benefits of the collateral circulation because you're not using it. Your body has to meet the demand you're placing on it, right? And if you quit, you're not, it's something you don't need anymore. So continue to just be active. If you take nothing else from me today, let's just move our body. The weather's about to start getting nicer and hopefully I'll be back soon too. I can create workout plans for you guys. Um, all right. So, I love this here. Zig Ziglar is one of the, my favorite uh, motivational speakers. He says, people often say that motivation doesn't last, well, neither does taking, taking a bath, neither, neither does bath, bathing, ugh. That's why it's recommended daily. Sorry, I just screwed that all up. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I, someone had a question. Yeah, what, uh, a couple slides ago I'd said, uh, what was it? Keep going, keep going. Uh, there you go. 30 minutes at the target at the target heart rate. What is that? I'm glad you, you brought that up. The target heart rate. So since most people, I'm not going to say most people, but a lot of individuals have beta blockers or um, medication that stop their heart rate from getting to a true heart rate, right? So you may notice, you may be working out and your heart rate could be 
you you working out you working out hard now you may see your heart rate 60 i'm just throwing a number out there now you know you're working out hard and there's no way your heart is at a you you know uh, 60 beats a minute or 70 beats <laughs> so those medications may stop that heart rate from showing what it truly is is um and so what i'm going to say is when I come back, I'll show you guys something we use, we use in rehab. It's called an RPE chart. And what we would do is have the individuals, we have a target zone, and when I would walk over to the patients, I would say, where are you on the chart? And they would say 12, 13, or 14. That lets me know that they're getting a good cardiovascular exercise because I don't know what their true heart rate is because of those beta blockers. So if they said, well, I'm a 19 right now, I have to take that workload down because it's not showing, that they're working way too hard. So in order for you to get that true heart rate where, where your heart rate is for those zones, a stress test has to be performed on an individual because everyone has a different heart rate. My heart rate is naturally in the 40s, but for someone my age, it may, it's gonna say like 60s or 70s at rest. So that's why I don't really go into that as much, but if I come back, I will make sure to have a the chart. And now, you know what, I'll send it to, to Jackie um, anyway, so you guys can have it, an RPE chart. So um, when you are exercising and moving your body at home, you can have some an indicator, okay, I'm not working hard enough or I need to work a little bit harder. And it's just a great way for you to um, know where your zones are. And as you, the fitter you get, you'll notice, all right, well, I've been at 2.5 miles an hour on the treadmill. It used to be a 13, but now it's a nine. So you'll know to turn it up a little bit more. It's just a great in indicator for you to um, stay in tune with your body. Great question. Thank you for asking that too. Thank you. Any more questions for me? What's a beta blocker? A beta blocker is a medication that stops the heart rate from rising to its true potential. It's a blood pressure medication. So, and it's, it's anything, uh, there's something they're called metoprolol or um, they in an L L L L O L. <laughs> so it's your your physician. If you guys you guys would know if you're on a beta blocker. Like lisinopril. I mean that's my blood pressure medicine. Is that one? Lisinopril. No, no, okay. no, no. All right. Are there any more questions for our speaker? No. Thank you guys for your time. You are all awesome. All right, thank you. I'm clapping for you guys right now because you know what you could have said. Hey. I'm, I'm not showing up today, but you did. So you're doing something for yourself. You, you know, that, that's huge. So, and I appreciate all you guys. Thank you so Thank much. you, Jackie. We appreciate it. Thank Wonderful. You. So if anyone would like that information, um, I can get that from Charles and we can send that out. I would like to just mention that on March 23rd, we will have uh, speakers from park districts, the libraries, um, a, couple, a couple other fitness instructors coming in to talk about different programs in Manhattan and New Lenox that are free um, or you know maybe a smaller fee depending on what the program is itself if you're interested in attending a class. Um, I would recommend if you've not taken a matter of balance class or a fit and strong class, chair yoga, uh, tai chi, those are really great programs to start out slowly to build up to everything that uh, Charles talked about today. In Matter of Balance, they talk a lot about um, changing your mindset, getting into a positive routine, and then different exercises that you can do at home with your chair. You can um, start going for walks. You can do different stretches that will strengthen your body to also help you not only become active, stay active, but if you were to fall, for whatever reason, you're able to protect yourself um, from severe injuries. So those classes are offered in Manhattan, New Lenox, and Piatone currently. Um, I would definitely check with uh, Dan Martin from Safe Communities Alliance in New Lenox. And then I also teach those classes as well. If you ever have questions for us, please feel free. Reach out to myself, Marissa, Christine, Mary, Charles. We are happy to help you at any point in time. Any questions for any of us? From Triad? Great. All right. Well, that concludes our meeting for today. You were wonderful, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All. Thank you. All. 
Triad works to improve the quality of life for seniors by providing an opportunity for the exchange of information between public safety, social services, and seniors. There are no membership papers to fill out or fees to pay. Everyone is welcome to attend. Each month, we present a guest speaker on subjects that keep you informed and up-to-date on the latest scams, frauds, and other criminal activities. We also discuss safety issues, home preparedness, and staying healthy. Triad meets the fourth Thursday of every month. Contact the New Lenox Police Department at 815-462-6100 for more information.